Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to Dev Chatter. Uh, my name is Brendan and uh, I would like to welcome everyone to uh, our 50th live stream. I am probably as amazed as you are. Uh, <laughs> doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it also feels like I've been doing this for quite a long time. So, uh, pretty awesome. So, woohoo, celebratory stream. Uh, so, I want to cover a couple of things today. Uh, I wanted to look at some code uh, that we've been working on, see what we can do with that, and um, make some improvements. Uh, I don't think you guys are getting background audio. Let me, let me take a look at that. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, you guys should have the background music now. And um, anyway, as I was saying, uh, I definitely want to uh, go over some of the code that we were doing last time and um, make some changes, do some updates there. want to talk about a few other things. Um, and hey, there's Worldwake. Uh, hi, Worldwake. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about .NET in general. Uh, there is a question that I got asked that I do want to answer, and that is related to all the various versions of .NET. So in all the code we've been doing here on stream so far, uh, we have pretty much exclusively been doing .NET Core stuff. Um, in some of the first few streams, we did a little bit of full framework code. And um, I do want to talk about um, essentially the differences between the various frameworks because there's a little bit of confusion, I know, for a lot of developers out there uh, between .NET Framework, .NET Core, and .NET Standard which uh, I do want to talk about because I think that is an important one and I can then explain to you why I'm using .NET Core for this project. Uh, hey, hey, welcome. Uh, oh man, I'm going to take a guess. Cyrilash? Uh, and if I butchered that, let me know and I will say it differently because I could also see it being uh, Cyrilash or... I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, welcome. Hopefully everybody's having a great day. Uh, today is Tuesday, May 22nd. Uh, and uh, it is about time for us to write a little bit of code. So I'm going to go over a couple of things before we dive into code. Uh, as some of you know, I am working on some upcoming streams, uh, getting those scheduled, figuring out what we're going to do. Okay, uh, so Sirelash. Uh, at least I got it in the in you know in two tries. That's not bad, uh, or at least got close on the second one. Uh, so I want to talk about our upcoming streams. So this week, uh, we're on Tuesday. I don't have anything yet scheduled for later this week. Uh, but next week, I have one that is going to get scheduled in. So we're going to have a guest next week. So uh, I don't know which day yet. So I need to confirm that. And if I have to shift around the schedule in order to accommodate, I will because I really want to get that stream in before the following week. Uh, so we are going to be building our... Uh, we're going to do our statically generated site next week, probably. That's the plan for that one. Uh, cute cat, welcome, hey. Uh, and then the week after next, so the first week of June, we are going to be doing uh, an Azure pairing stream. Uh, and you'll see that on, on the schedule there. So we've got that one scheduled a couple of weeks out in advance. Um, and uh, that is... Uh, Maxime, and he is one of the uh, cloud developer advocates uh, at Microsoft, so you can find him online. Uh, and uh, he will be on the stream with us uh, Tuesday, June 5th. Um, and then I also have uh, a couple of other people that I'm trying to get scheduled in in these two weeks. So we'll see who I get in there and, and what we're able to get. But I wanted to talk to you about that and let you know what's uh, upcoming. I actually created an event in Twitch for uh, Maxime's uh, appearance on the stream because we had enough time out that I was like, yeah, I can create an event for that because we scheduled it a couple of weeks in advance. Okay. Um, let's see. Other things I want to talk about. There are a couple of issues that are in here. Um, this is the one that I was talking about a bit ago. And that is, I'm going to discuss the various versions of these. I'll probably do that today. So if you have any confusion about uh, the different versions of .NET, the full framework, .NET Core, and .NET Standard, uh, I'm going to explain them a little bit and try to do the 
Uh, I'm going to try to give an explanation that doesn't delve into all of the details of it and generally gets you an idea of what the point of all of these are and how you use them. So, like, the more practical, like, get an understanding of what this even is and why is it structured like this? Why did they break it into these pieces? Yeah, World Wake. I think a lot of people are. Uh, it's one of the things that we knew was going to be a problem. And uh, we want to make sure that... Um, we want to make sure that people actually understand these. Uh, 8 on FPS. Um, I have used Python. I haven't used Go. Um, I actually used to be a Python developer long ago, and um, uh, I haven't used them for a bot. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yes, uh, we all have clients. Uh, I have I have definitely missed a stream because I had to do client stuff before. Uh, it happens. Okay, so uh, we're going to cover that one today. Uh, and then the other thing is we're going to be working on our bot. So another c -sharp .NET Core project uh, that we've been working on. So we're going to jump back to this. We've been recently adding our web interface to this. Uh, I'm probably going to add a couple more pieces and then bring it into the master branch once we feel comfortable with it being uh, a... Uh, a location where we could be configuring the bot. So that then becomes, oh, you might run this as the configuration piece. And then our next big change to the bot is making it so the bot itself runs through that web interface. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know and hasn't figured this out from what I'm sort of implying here, our bot actually runs as a console application. So if you notice the bot that is in our chat, you can send it commands as I just did. You can see over there in the chat window. It responds back with those. Uh, all the code for it is out on GitHub, as is sort of implied by that link I just tossed in chat. And uh, if you want to check it out, you can go there, take a look. Uh, you can report issues, you could fork it, you could send us pull requests, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, you are welcome to take a look at that bot. And um, the code is out there. In fact, everything we do on this stream, we actually push out to GitHub so anyone can take a look at that and contribute if they want, or just file a bug, or just take a look at it. Uh, so that's where all of that code is. Now the reason it's running as a console application is because we don't need it to run as anything else yet. Uh, we, built this ha we built this bot with the idea being that you would do all the configuration through the chat, which actually is really fun. Um, a couple of things it's not a great interface for, um, having it in the chat, but it's cool to have it in there. And we did that first because that's the more interesting one. Everybody's seen web pages built before, but it's kind of fun to do it from the chat client. Okay, so as I said, I am going to start off by talking about the various versions of the .NET framework. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to pull up the page that confuses everyone. Uh, and I'm going to use that to explain what the different .NET framework versions are. Uh, so .NET framework versions... Okay, where are they? Is this the docs one? Yes, it is. No. Um, standard, uh, no, not cord, co code core. Okay, uh, is that? No, 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 no. I want this one. I think. Nope. Uh, so what I'm looking for, here it is, this is the one I was looking for. Okay, so I wanted to find this table of information, because this table is actually uh, really confusing, but once you understand it, all of this starts to make sense. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump into this and tell you right now that uh, they this should be made clearer. So this is like a header row. So yeah, it's you can tell it's kind of bolded there. If you look, you can see that net standard is bold, and those are the links. Uh, but what I want to make clear here is that this really should be a heading, because .NET standard is basically like saying, it's kind of like, think of this like an interface in C Sharp. So if you depend on .NET standard, then you are depending on this interface. And it does not matter whether you are actually going to run as .NET Core, .NET Framework, Mono, Xamarin, 
It does not matter what you are, really. So essentially, if you think of this as an interface, and these as implementations of this interface, that is probably the best way of, like, simple explaining what .NET standard is. So, if you noticed, in our project, when we set this up, we set up our core library here as a .NET standard 2.0 framework. So we said that our project is using that interface, so it depends on this. So, what that means, uh, when I open this back up, is that .NET Core 2.0, or newer, can use it. Framework 4.6.1 can use it. Mono 5.4 can use it. And, you know, on and on down the list. And so the idea here is that the .NET standard is basically saying this library is going to use what is a subset of all of these frameworks. So, when .NET Core came around, it was important that it adhered to the .NET standard, so that we could write libraries against .NET standard. So if you're doing a class library, uh, if you're making a NuGet package, if you are building an open source project that other projects are going to depend on, you usually want that to depend on .NET standard. If you can, that means that any of these projects listed below can use it, any of these versions. So by depending on Net Standard 2.0, you allow uh, a large set of versions to use it. You could depend on Net Standard 1.6, for example, and that would also be fine. Um, in fact, by doing 1.6, you allow .NET Core 1.0 projects to run as well. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that one right now, because the adoption of .NET Core 2.0 is pretty high. So um, I would expect that you can probably get away at this point with making everything .NET Standard 2, even though obviously you might be able to make it uh, a lower version. It probably won't matter. Okay, so the short explanation, we do that. That's what .NET Standard is. Remember, .NET Standard is like an interface that Core and Framework implement. So if you think of it that way, that means that Core and Full Framework could have more in them than .NET Standard supports. Um, I don't know the specifics of what things are outside the bounds of each one. Uh, I, I think you'd have to go check every single feature to figure out what exactly is in each one. Net standard will get you most everything you need, though. Um, so if you're building, uh, if you're building an implementation today of new code, and you're running on Windows and everything like that, you're really deciding between .NET Core and .NET Framework. If you, want it, if you want your code to be able to run on uh, non-Windows systems, the obvious choice is choosing .NET Core, because that can be uh, built and run on non-Windows machines. So uh, that's actually one of the reasons why our project is .NET Core. Uh, the .NET standard is not... yeah, exactly. It is, it is language agnostic. So, just like .NET Core and .NET Framework don't care what language you're writing in, .NET Standard doesn't either. These are all frameworks. So .NET Standard is, think of this like the interface of a framework, and .NET Core and .NET Framework as implementations of that interface. Uh, and if you think of it that way, it should make sense when to use it. So if you, uh, what I would actually recommend today, so if you know you need the full framework, I would say use the full framework. If you don't know that you need the full framework, I would recommend that you use Core. So some of the projects that I'm uh, developing right now for clients, I do have some that are still using Net Framework because they have dependencies that won't be updating to Net Standard, which means I won't be able to use .NET Core on them. I have to use Full Framework because I have a dependency on it. So that means I run Full Framework on those projects. Every single other project that I have made since the 2.0 release for any client has been .NET Core. Uh, now there are a variety of reasons I've done that. Um, one of them being that .NET Core is lighter weight and faster overall than .NET Framework is. 
and uh, if you don't need all of that excess stuff, there's not really any selling point to .NET Framework. Um, the advantage of it today is the fact that you do get more stuff. It implements more things than .NET Core does, uh, but that obviously comes with a little bit of heft. Uh, okay, so that I'm gonna check your questions, just make sure that nobody asked anything. Any anything? Okay. Uh, is learning programming rewarding? Like, what's your have a salary if you don't want to say on you know programming? Um, salaries vary, um, and it's it's actually hard to say what exactly programming salaries are, but they're usually good almost everywhere. Um, let's see, uh, so people like me can use like uh, yes, cute cat. You can actually run our project on Linux. It works just fine. Uh, in fact, we have some people that have done that. You can also run it inside containers, so you could run this in Docker, uh, which means that you could run it on Windows or Linux and really not even care where it is. Um, Worldwake, is the net standard open? Could I write a net standard implementation if I felt like it? Um, technically, you could because um, keep in mind that .NET Core is open source, uh, Worldwake, so you could fork... Um, .NET Core or Mono or something like that and make your own implementation of that and as long as you still supported .NET Standard um, I think you could do that. I don't know explicitly in the language what tells it that it is an acceptable .NET Standard implementation. Um, so I would definitely need to talk to the some of the language and framework guys about that one before I could get you an answer on that but I have a feeling if you forked from an existing one, that would be the way you could do it. Um, not that I'd recommend it. Um, because what I would say is if there is a deficiency within the language, uh, within the framework, so if, if .NET Core was deficient for you in some reason, it probably is for everyone, so you'd be better off either um, logging an issue uh, with .NET Core itself or uh, sending them a pull request or something like that. Uh, MTC743, um, will Microsoft Linux use Framework one of them? Uh, I do not believe that they're going to merge these away. I think the use of the net standard interface is actually what is going to make it so they don't need to. Um, .NET Framework, I will say, uh, don't think that's going away because it's not going away. Way too much stuff is depending on it. Um, so that will not disappear for quite a long time. Uh, but net core is definitely the future of where they're going with everything. So I think at some point it's going to be the one that just takes over. Um, I didn't see what the link was, if that was even a link, because Nightbot was too quick. So sorry about that, uh, MTC. Uh, and Propagated, hey, hi, uh, cute cat. Yeah, uh, Nightbot gets a little overzealous, so I didn't actually see what the what the link was, if there even was one. Um, but if you whisper that to me, uh, if it was a link and not just, you know, saying ASP.NET or something like that, <laughs> it, it likes to get those. Um, okay, uh, trying to think if there's anything else we need to talk about. Um, no, I think that, I think that's basically it. Okay, so let's take a look at some code. Oh, and uh, I should point out, so I mentioned that these target net standard 2.0, but if you take a look at uh, our web project, for example, you will see that it runs net core 2.1. So a net core 2.1 project can depend on a net standard 2.0 project. So you'll notice inside of here, I have a reference to that net core, uh, net standard library right here. So you'll see it in these. So net standard, net standard, and net standard. So that's how you can tell at a glance that your dependencies are net standard, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, is it alright if I make an interactive shell that runs in a terminal? Um, you want to make a shell around the bot that runs in a terminal? Um, you certainly could make one of those. Um, you're talking about writing one in .NET Core so we could control the bot in that way? Uh, if so, I would not complain about having that, although uh, we're planning on uh, having real-time controls of the bot through a web interface, cute cat. So uh, that is our plan, is to actually get a web interface on it. Uh, 
Question. Uh, for a RESTful API project, separate UI is Web API 2 dead and long live MVC 6. I read a long blog about it over the weekend and I'm still not sure. Uh, so Microsoft would probably tell you it's not dead, um, but uh, my short answer to that um, is that um, there are a lot of technologies that overlap a lot. And um, generally speaking, if, um, if it's easier for people to use uh, a more general solution that can solve both problems, they're probably going to. So Web API in general was, uh, the whole time, was always just a nicer way of dealing with API calls over standard MVC. So um, there was never really much that was all that special about Web API to begin with. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if it is less active. Uh, but I would tell you that Microsoft is going to say that it's not going away. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the things that I do like uh, is that you got to remember that Web API is just, um, it's just libraries at the end of the day, right? Everything is just libraries. And so uh, you will notice in our project here, so I'm not doing it. This is not an MVC site, not really. This uses Razor Pages. So that's why we have this pages folder. And if we look at this, you'll see that they say page at the top and their structure is uh, that they have a page model as sort of a code behind for these. So this is razor pages. And before anyone freaks out that's new here, this is not web forms. This is like, this is not like a code behind from that. It is, it is not uh, coupled like that was. Uh, so I just want to make that clear really fast. Um, however, um, just because I'm using razor pages for my uh, view system, I do want to point out that I can still add controllers if I want to and still do MVC or Web API in this project. So especially if I'm using full framework, I can still take advantage of that. In fact, if you add a new web project, let me show you this real fast. I'm not actually going to add it. But if I go in and I say file new web application and I go in here on this screen and I change authentication and I add in individual user accounts, which actually it's not going to let me do here. Um, but if I do that and I add in that authentication piece, what it is actually going to build for me is um, it is going to set that up with... Um, a set of razor pages that do the registration, the login, etc. However, it is also going to create a controller action for logging out because logout ends up on uh, up in that top bar. And the top bar, as you may know from how this works, is in the layout CSHTML file right here. So this file doesn't have its own code behind because only a razor page has one. And so that's why it needs a controller in order to do logout. So that's why I point out I still have controller here. I still have controllers even though I'm using pages as my views. Okay. Uh, you can... Uh, the blog talked about web compat shim. Uh, yeah, so there are ways of getting around needing, uh, needing to support old libraries as well. Uh, I don't have knowledge or experience with .NET Core, but I'll try. Okay, that's cool, cute cat. Uh, it's a fun experiment. .NET Core is um, lightweight, pretty easy to use. So, um, and you still get the power of C Sharp, which is nice. Um, you can write .NET standard, connect to full framework, and Core and other. Janisku, yes. So if you do a um, an ASP.NET Core website, for example, you can um, you can actually have that be full framework. And in addition. If you are doing this, you can actually use precompiler statements. Uh, yeah, see, uh, if def platform. Yeah, what Janiscu said down there. So you can do that. Uh, now, I've done that before, and I can tell you that while you can run full framework, so it's like you say, like, um, if def, and it's like net471 or something like that. So if that's defined, that means that you're depending on full framework. And uh, once you do that, then 
it's able to grab that when you are in the full framework case. The problem with going that route is it starts really messing with your editor and it doesn't always know what's going on. So things get confusing and wonky when you start doing a lot of um, pre-compiler statements like that. So um, in C Sharp, just to explain to you all what that looks like, um, if I want something to only happen uh, in those cases, um, I might end up with something like this, where you know I have a reference that I can only reference when I have full framework. So I might say, um, you know, it's like uh, if and so this says like net core app to one, right? And then end if, right? And so this would be like a dependency that only happens when I'm in net core to one. So that that's how that works. Now, uh, if I then wanted to make the requirement be full framework, I would do the same thing, except I think it's called like net 471 or something for, for version 4.7, you know, you get the idea. Uh, so that is uh, one of the things you can do. Uh, so, yep, so if, and, and really I would do that in my net standard library. So I would basically specify in my net standard project, if I'm full framework, do this. If I'm core, do this. And so you can sort of control that. I've had to do that in a project before Janiscu. I was not a fan of having to do it, um, but it is required sometimes. Uh, what are the main differences in implementations between .NET Core and full framework? Um, uh, <laughs> Keenan, uh, it didn't actually get asked. I sort of brought it up as like a, there are, uh, you would really need to dig in um, to, to find what the exact differences are. I don't actually know off the top of my head what all the differences are. Um, the, the biggest difference that I would cite has nothing actually to do with the feature difference of them and has to do with the fact that because they are a different dependency, relying on one or the other um, how to explain this? Uh, if something was built for full framework versus .NET Core, because it is a different version, it will see those dependency difference even where they're identical and say they don't match up. So even though it could be net standard, that's one of the, the biggest problems with it. Um, so uh, propagated is kind of correct. Um, that is one of the big things of what .NET Core is for. Uh, so I guess propagated is, a, is completely correct, but there's more to it. Um, .NET Core is designed to be cross-platform. So our project, despite the fact that you know normally anything built in Visual Studio uh, using C Sharp was pretty much Windows only, despite that Mono existed, you know, Mono's existed for like at least 15 years, right? I don't remember exactly when Mono came around, uh, but it actually was shortly after .NET showed up, you could uh, use Mono for C Sharp on Linux. And um, I'd actually have to think about exactly when that started. Um, but either way, the point is that now it is an official thing that .NET runs on non-Windows. And I say non-Windows because it's not just Linux. Uh, so it is for that, but it's also built as a lighter weight uh, solution. So uh, anybody that does ASP.NET Core um, has probably noticed almost immediately that everything's faster uh, because the challenge that we always ran into in full framework.net and especially in ASP.net is that we had years of dependencies and layers that we were building on that could not disappear. And so .NET Core was built to not have those underlying layers there so that we didn't have to depend on this uh, large framework structure that was always required in the past. So part of the re so one of the big things that slowed down ASP.NET, if you were running it, is that we had to load up all of the uh, old stuff. Okay, uh, yes, even Windows apps will run on uh, NetCore 3.0. So that is actually one of the best things, is that they are gonna start supporting this for like WinForms, WPF. Uh, I expect that everything is gonna be able to run on NetCore eventually. So it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, Keenan. Uh, the only thing I hate about .NET Core is that you can't create a single executable to publish and self-contained deployment as such. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fair, WTF blub. Uh, that is one of the annoying things is, um, but I believe the reason that it is done that way, WTF blub, is for the cross-platform uh, functionality. Uh, and you've worked with Mono Gaming Framework in C Sharp. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, oh, 2001. So yeah, see, has been over 15 years now. Uh, thanks for checking that, Twitchloff. Uh, why did Microsoft buy uh, 
Xamarin and create .NET Core. Um, so uh, my best answer for that one is that .NET Core, so a lot of us like to reinvent the wheel. Um, I will give Microsoft permission to reinvent the wheel on a development framework that's going to be, uh, <laughs> that they're going to be doing. Uh, and I would argue that if you've run uh, .NET Core, you have probably noticed that it is lightweight and fantastic and that I don't want to bash Xamarin and Mono because they are also very good and so is the full, so is the existing full framework, but not, .NET Core has done amazing things for uh, .NET development. And I think that really is the answer. I think they built the one that is going to go everywhere, and that is really the answer. For you, is breaking the philosophy of Um Well, no, so supporting it there is fine. Um, um, and the big thing that I would like is if they um, so adding it to extra places is fine. Being able to use net core in as many places as you can is great, but what I want is I want a UI framework that will run anywhere. And keep in mind that our, um, our project here, our web project, uh, this is a .NET Core 2.1 project. You can run this on Linux, so this web project. Uh, and I'm hoping they get us a lightweight U, uh, GUI project so that we, you know, that's not WPF, WinForms, anything like that running on .NET. Not that those aren't great because... Um, there are still uses for them as much as we bash them. Uh, you can get an exe out of it. But yeah, there's a yeah, exactly. Um, very, very well said. Propagated. Uh, uh, people were starting to migrate from .NET to other languages and ecosystems like Node.js. I guess .NET Core was Microsoft. Uh, Twitchloft, yes. In some ways, this is Microsoft's answer to that. Um, and I know a lot of devs that were begrudgingly leaving. Uh, and going to other platforms because they didn't want to leave C Sharp. They love C Sharp, but the problem is it's a tough sell when you could only develop for one platform, etc. And uh, a lot of developers I know run on Mac computers and were always dual booting Windows just so that they could do their development. So now you don't need to do that. Um, I remember being in the room when, when they announced uh, VS Code and I was just like, you know, like, whoa, really, you guys? Are, oh man, this is this is wonderful because we were actually asking for a. Um, so we were not asking for VS Code exactly. What we wanted was like um, an X copy deployable. Uh, so sorry that uh, that's. <laughs> hey, I just gave away how old I am because um, I was talking about X copy deploying stuff. Um, essentially, the idea is we wanted a. Um, an IDE version, uh, like so a Visual Studio version, that we could just put somewhere. So the idea being that we wanted to be like, yeah, this can just deploy with our, you know, like we could just put this on a machine, you know, it could be on a USB key and we could just run this thing. And so we wanted like lightweight Visual Studio. Well, turns out VS Code pretty much was lightweight Visual Studio. So we're like, yeah, good enough. Um, so that actually solved a lot of problems and being able to run it on non-Windows solves the other problem. So, um, a lot of developers now uh, still do their .NET code and just do it in VS Code. Uh, what are the .NET framework features you miss the most in .NET Core? Uh, MTC. Uh, so there aren't specific features that I miss from .NET Framework. In fact, the only thing I miss from full framework is actually dependencies on certain libraries. Um, so there are, uh, as if anybody here has done any development of any um, if you've done any development on uh, anything having to do with any Office products, you've you know generated Word files, Excel files, PowerPoint files, you've needed to harvest data out of them or anything like that, you probably know that there are tons of packages out there that do this work. Some of them are good and some of, and well most of them are terrible. Um, and so the problem that you run into is that you need to deal with uh, the um, you need to deal with that, and the best packages I know of do require full framework. So that is part of the reason why I like using full framework some of the time. That's probably the biggest case. So when I need to uh, do anything with those products, that's when I have to do it. Uh, in I run a production app on Linux uh, written in ASP.NET. Uh, oh, 
Uh, that is awesome, Brain. Very cool. Uh, yes, exactly. Exciting times. Air tags, crops, uh, VS for Mac, yes. Um, and JetBrains Writer, C Sharp, Dev on Linux, yeah, WTF Blub. Um, Writer is an alternative to using uh, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. You can and you can run that on on Mac or Windows as well. Um, and uh, anybody that is used to ReSharper already uh, runs into that same thing and is going to know how to use uh, Writer from JetBrains. Uh, let's see. If not for VS, I would not run Windows because VS Code is not the same. Uh, yeah. So um, you're you're right. Um, VS Code is not the same as Visual Studio, and uh, neither is VS for Mac. They are slightly different. Uh, Visual Studio, I mean, you'll notice I'm running Visual Studio here, not VS Code, so I'm a big fan of it. Uh, but you do need to keep in mind that, um, that a lot of people aren't always writing uh, the same stuff we are, and they also sometimes like lighter weight solutions. And some people don't have as, uh, for example, as a beefy machine. So. I'm running on a desktop here, so I have, you know, crap tons of, of RAM, I've got SSDs, hard drives, out the wazoo in this thing, and I can upgrade it when I need to. So, uh, my computer is actually pretty nice in that sense, whereas if I were running on a laptop, um, I would definitely see why someone might write, might write their code in VS Code. Uh, did I just lag spike? No, not bad. Okay. I had a small amount of... I, I thought I got a little bit of lag there. I got a few drop frames, but not many. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, only things being challenged is hacking the servers. I'm sure. Uh, VisMax is basically mono... Uh, Twitchloth. <laughs> not basically. It is. Um, uh, I believe they actually did just take uh, that and turn it into VS for Mac. Uh, I use Mousepad as an ID. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Visual Studio for Windows is just insane. I'm not nearly as productive using VS Code and Linux. Yeah, Visual. There's a reason that that Visual Studio is a liked and hated um, tool. Uh, so uh, the VS Code have replaced the Notepad Plus and Notepad use. Yes, uh, it's hard to justify using Notepad Plus Plus when VS Code exists and is as lightweight and easy as it is. Um, uh, so one other thing, welcome everyone that's in here. Um, I wanted to say good day to everybody. We're going to go ahead and start writing some code now. We've been talking about .NET Core. Uh, for anybody that is wondering, uh, you know, we got this question, and I wanted to make sure that I explained uh, what .NET Core, .NET Standard, full framework are. So that's why we've been talking about that. Uh, I thought that was a good question, a good discussion point, especially since we are running .NET Core. Uh, I also want to mention to everybody, uh, I want to thank all of you for the awesome support because this actually is our 50th stream here on Dev Chatter. So I can't believe it has been 50 streams already. Uh, that is crazy. Uh, we have like, you know, we're, we're nearing 900 followers and uh, I've only been streaming for a few months now. So uh, it's really kind of awesome. So I wanted to thank everybody for being here and, uh, you know, making it awesome. So. You, you are all awesome. Uh, let's see. Twitch on was zero the part of the... Yeah. Hey! Thank you for the uh, Twitch Prime sub there, Propagated. Uh, much appreciated. Hey, Arid Tag. <laughs> hype, hype. Yeah, so... Uh, crazy uh, to think this you know 50 streams it is actually quite a lot so it's very cool um, I, I, I didn't have anything planned for what to do on the 50th stream so I was like yeah we're just gonna do a regular stream for that one we're not gonna do anything special just a normal one um, anyway uh, so I was gonna close this one out world wake isn't yelling at me with questions right now so <laughs> and uh, get done uh, welcome. Thanks for following. Uh, so thanks everybody for the for the support. Uh, I really enjoy doing it. So as as I tell people, they're like, "What you know? Like, why are you doing a stream?" And I was like, "Well, that's an easy question, uh, because I uh, I end every stream and I'm like, wow, that was really fun. Like, I wrote a lot of code. You know, it was it was it was interesting. We did fun stuff. We chatted about stuff. So it's always fun. Uh, 
Yes, exactly, Propagated. <laughs> yes, the, the reason the channel is called Dev Chatter is that I'm, I shouldn't be the only one talking here. So it's called that because it's a community of people talking about code. So welcome to Dev Chatter. Ah, uh, I think, Twitchloft, that you are ref. Yes, this is the table we were looking at, uh, Twitchloft. So this is what I, where I was explaining that standard. Uh, so thank you for posting the link there. Uh, this is the one I talked about, and the quick explanation for everybody, uh, the best way to know what .NET Core is, what .NET Standard is, and what full framework and all the other various versions are, is .NET Standard that I highlighted. Here's my big complaint about what the docs have right now. They need this to be bigger and more prominent because you need to know that this line is a header because the best way to think of this when explaining it to a .NET developer, .NET Standard is an interface, and .NET Core, .NET Framework, Mono, etc. are implementations of this interface. So if you think of it like that, it should make some sense. Uh, and then it's about choosing which implementation you want to use. So in your class libraries, it makes sense to depend on .NET Standard, unless you need one of the other ones, because .NET Standard is just an interface of which many things have implementations. So this is like uh, when you're writing a lot of your core logic in your program, you'll think, think of it this way. You depend on interfaces. You don't depend on the concrete classes. So you might say, oh yeah, I only need this because I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to depend on the interface. So the same concept applies. In your class libraries, you depend on .NET Standard and then choose which implementation you want for uh, your code that requires an implementation. And that's all you do. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle some more of this. So uh, right now we have our web project open. So if anybody is interested, uh, I'm going to link to GitHub one more time. Uh, so our code's github.com slash devchatter. We're in the devchatter bot project, as you can see right here. That's the repository we're in. And this is the branch we're in. It's Benrick ASP.NET conversion. So if you did want to contribute to this part and not into the main uh, project, when you send your pull request, it's got to go to this branch, not the master branch. Uh, so if you did want to do something related to our web project. Uh, okay, so uh, let me go ahead and start this. So as you all can see, I have the bot running. It's in chat. That's how it was able to respond to us there. And I want to go ahead and bring up our browser view here. So we're going to bring this up. Um, and man, I so uh, to let you all know, uh, I am actually going to work on my lighting so that I don't look so dark and shaded uh, on the webcam here. And um, I'm actually going to get a light, another light up here uh, just to improve things a little bit. Uh, but I need to go ahead and order that. Uh, and I also want to give you guys a warning that there's a big storm where I am. So uh, crossing my fingers that I don't drop power midstream. But if I suddenly disappear, that's probably why. Um, okay, so the couple of things we set up. Uh, we started setting up a page for managing the games. Uh, we haven't done much with this yet. Um, we're basically mocking in what we want this interface to look like, and then we can start filling in the details. So we're sort of building the structure for how we think this is going to work. Um, and this could fall into a little bit of doing a horizontal stripe instead of a vertical stripe, but the reason I'm doing it this way is that um, because of the type of project we are, someone else might want to come along and implement some of this. And by sort of putting in, hey, this is the spot where we want to do this, I think it'll be easier for other people to be able to send pull requests and help us out with this stuff. Uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Twitchloff, thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, the uh, bits for a Tesla Powerwall. Yes, exactly. You know, we, we need a cat cam and then a, uh, a Tesla house battery the power wall thing um i actually thought those were awesome uh, i would love to get one and put it in my uh i would love to have it in my garage and cover that thing in solar panels because that would be neat uh, i actually do have a garage that would be ideal for covering in solar panels yes there no uh actually how much does the power wall cost tesla power wall power wall battery what do these things cost? I don't remember what these things cost. Uh, like six six thousand dollars or something. 
So, oh yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Six thousand dollars. That's just uh, six hundred thousand bits. That's easy. That's not. That's not uh, nine hundred millionaire tag. You're way off. Yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, uh, like if if someone uh, cheers on a Twitch channel for anybody that doesn't know. Um, what that does is each each bit in the cheer, they're called bits, uh, that roughly equates to about a US penny, so a hundred of those is a US dollar. Um, so, kind of funny. Uh, anybody that doesn't do... So, um, for anybody that hasn't guessed, uh, based on uh, my stepping into Twitch streaming and already knowing a lot about Twitch, um, I actually have done some Twitch gaming streaming before, and I do a lot of watching of gaming streams on Twitch as well. So I know a lot about the Twitch community and I've been fairly involved in it for quite a while. So I like Twitch a lot. It gets a nice place for doing stuff. Uh, manage commands. Uh, cool. Configure commands command. Uh, manage commands. Uh, okay, so here's what we want to do. Uh, I want to rename that, so let's go to the commands command page. Uh, index, actually. We're going to go here, so this is, I want to say, um, edit simple commands. So I'm going to rename that to that. Whoops. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cute cat, you got it. There you go. So, uh, there's a link to the GitHub, and for anyone that actually wants to chat with anybody else, um, not that there's always that much discussion, but um, if you do want to chat with uh, any of the rest of us in Dev Chatter, you can check out our Discord. It is a chat client uh, that you can use for that. And I can't pronounce that name, but thank you for following. Welcome to Dev Chatter. Um, I don't even have a guess on, on that one. I apologize, I, I don't read, uh, I, I only know one character set, really. Uh, I can read a little bit of, uh, Cyrillic alphabet phonetically, but I don't know what the words are I'm saying half the time. Um, so, edit commands, uh, commands, uh, edit, you know, we'll say edit simple commands, we're gonna get rid of this one because that's a duplicate. So edit cooldown, edit simple commands, and this is the configure commands command. What else do we need that are just commands? The quotes command needs to be in here. Uh, so we'll say quotes command. Let's make a section for the quotes command. Um, So the quotes command, edit cooldown. Um, uh, let's see. Um, we're going to need a whole quotes section on this one. So it's going to actually need a page because it needs a page for editing the actual quote data. So we're going to make, oh, actually, I was about to move it, but it's right here. So there is the quotes uh, page. So we're going to put it up there. And then we're going to say on this one, so that is quotes. Yep, yeah, quotes, quotes, quote, quote, quotes. Uh, I can type, I promise. I've typed once before in my life. Now I just, uh, I switch between a bunch of keyboards, so it's still taking me a little bit of time. Um, Probably about, I don't know, three weeks ago I got a new keyboard. Uh, that's a keyboard I've used before, but it takes a little while to get used to switching keyboards, even if you already know the keyboard you're using. Okay. Quotes. Uh, edit. Quotes. Uh, so edit the cooldown is a thing. Um, and I kind of want to say, like, you know choose favorites or something like that um, but I'm not sure what other things we want for quotes in here <laughs> thanks WTF love yeah of course I'm making excuses otherwise you guys would know I don't know how to type 
I never learned. I was sick that day in school. Um, oh, and you'll probably notice that I didn't click my Pepsi button. This is this is not a Pepsi. It's not I, the Pepsi sponsorship hasn't come through yet. Everybody, I apologize. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, uh, eventually, they're gonna they're gonna come through that sponsorship and start just supplying you know Pepsi to my house, or at least that's my hope. Uh, okay, so next thing we want. So the quotes command should basically be there. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this as is uh, with that movement. Um, move quotes command. And I do the movement before I updated the the, the namespace Pepsi Man dot wave. <laughs> Propagated. You're disappointed that I'm not drinking Pepsi. Is that the problem? Um, everybody that knows my channel knows that I usually drink Pepsi on here. Uh, but I actually just buy whatever's on sale. Um, I, I if they're both on sale, I'd rather have the Pepsi. But you know, what are you gonna do? Um, but uh, before I write any code here. Everybody doing better now? See, I had a I had a Pepsi to follow up my Coke. See, uh, I opened up the case of Pepsi shortly before the uh, shortly before the stream, but I still had a Coke I was drinking, so I had to finish that first before we could get to the Pepsi. So, so you're welcome, everybody. I hope you all think that was awesome because uh, Pepsi Man is <laughs> well, yeah. If you've ever seen that game, uh, and propagated, you're right. Coke Man just doesn't come off right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, cute cat. I, I like it too. Uh, never liked superhero movies until that moment. <laughs> oh, Zapdos Man. Ah, oh, I like the name. Uh, then again, I'm, I'm, I'm old school like that. Uh, Cute Cat, what game did you break? Pepsi Man? Someone here actually played that. That's If, if so, that's awesome. <clears throat> oh, nice. I, I hope broke doesn't mean, like, literally broken. Uh... All right, so here's what we need to do. We need to fix this. So we did pages and then quotes, but we want this to be commands, not quotes. Uh, so, whoops. Actually, I need to get the other part first. I have to get these first. So I'm going to get this. And then I'm going to hop. Whoops. Uh, I backticked on that. I don't know if you guys can see that. I accidentally hit a backtick on the end of that. Now we're going to hop down here, and I'm going to say replace with dot commands dot quotes. Replace all. Uh, please open the files for me because I'm a coward and I want to be able to undo. Okay, five occurrences. That was the correct number. Now I'm going to step into the CSHTML files, and I'm going to replace this with the same thing. Commands dot quotes and the entire solution. I'm going to press the cowardly checkbox again. Uh, wait, what? Oh, index model. Rep. My mistake. Sorry, I'm going to do that. Now it should be four occurrences. There we go. Did someone say in chat that I'm that I had index model in there? Did someone get that? Uh, Sven, uh, actually, there is a problem that you can run into with using Resharper for that. That's actually the reason I did that. There is a case where that doesn't work. Um, in fact, there's also another bug that I need to, that I've told um, some people in I think the SP.NET team about. Uh, that I think I could show you guys pretty easily. I don't remember exactly how to reproduce it. Um, but there are a couple of issues with how those work, and it doesn't always rename correctly. So that's why I just do that one. Uh, so updating quotes uh, page namespaces. So I agree. Norm. So like a regular re namespace uh, rename, I just click and it just does. 
Uh, but that one I do that way. And actually, the annoying thing on that one is I still have to open up all ten files. I wish it would do that better. Uh, maybe it will let me rename a namespace? I'm not sure. Uh, to the point where it crashed, Man64 had to unplug it and plug it in. That is really awesome, cute cat. Um, that takes some work to mess up a game that hard. Okay, so let's see. Share the games, hang commands. Okay. So inside of our commands section, we now have uh, quotes, and it is at quotes index. <clears throat> uh, yeah, WTF blub, the uh, the check, I called it the coward's checkbox that I was clicking. Um, doing that actually is what caused the file opening. Um, and I did that because without the file opening, I can't control Z. So in case I messed up my replace and it borked everything, um, that saved me from having to, you know, go over to Git and do a reset um, to fix it, if anything were wrong. Which, again, I, we're using source control, so I could do it that way. Probably should have done it, but, eh, it still worked. Okay, so next command that needs uh, work. Let's take a look at the command section. See what we've got. So we need configuration for some of these things. So quotes, we definitely need schedule. Oh man, do we need schedule? Um, we need to be able to edit the schedule somewhere. I just thought about that now. That is probably one of the biggest ones. So where does schedule go? Schedule could go on the home page. Uh, actually, that's probably not gonna. That's probably not gonna run right now. I'm gonna need to restart the site. Hang on. Almost guaranteed I need to restart this site. Oh, actually, apparently it worked. Never mind, either way. Uh, where would schedule go? Um, might go right on the beginning. I think that goes in the root. We're going to put it on the root. So let's open this up. We're going to go to index CSHTML. Um, we no longer need these, actually, the manage the games, because we put those elsewhere. Currency management. Um, uh, schedule management. I don't know if that's exactly what we're going to call it, but I'm going to put schedule management on here. And then, ah, template. Nice. We're going to say schedule management. Um, this is the schedule. Let's take a look at what we've got under here. Schedule management. Uh, this is the schedule. Okay, cool. I think that'll work. Um, so we're going to make schedule management here. Uh, so for now, just to stub it in, um, Uh, this is probably going to yell at me about this. Uh, this will make it a UL. Um, and then... On days at 2 p.m. Tuesdays at 2 p.m. EDT. Thursdays at that. And Saturdays... Yes, this is all going to be data-driven eventually. Uh, 2, 2, 12, 1. Okay, that is correct. <clears throat> so this will all be data-driven in the future. Um, I'm just stubbing that in there just to see what it looks like. Uh, so, you know, not, not styled, but it's there. Um, and probably when this does actually get styled, we're not going to see those bullets or anything like that. We'll figure something out. Uh, but that should work. We have to, we'll have to make decisions on what that uh, unordered list is actually going to look like. Um, this is the schedule. Um, do we want to do anything with this? Um, hmm. 
Uh, let's do an A with an ASP page and say schedule index. Edit the schedule. Um, cute kit, uh, coins. You didn't have the S. It's got an S. Yeah, there's an S on that. Yeah, see? Uh, however, you make a good point. Whoops. Alias add coins coin. There you go. Uh, congratulations, there's now a coin. Uh, and RPS Rock. Janisku, you're finally coming around to that good old rock. Nothing beats rock. Glad, glad you agree with me. And if anyone wants to play... Uh, and yeah, you'll see, the alias works immediately. Uh, people checking coin to make sure it works. Uh, so th that's how our aliasing works in the bot. Uh, that was actually a contribution from one of our viewers. Uh, so that was a pull request. Quite a nice one, actually, getting an alias uh, command. And implemented, uh, so I think I put that one out. I think I said how, how to implement it, but either way, it's nice. Uh, oh, um, Zapdos Man. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, bonus, Zapdos Man. Uh, have some coins, Zapdos Man. You should have gotten them when following, but I'm not sure that that works right now. Uh, I think it says it does, but I'm not sure it really does. Uh, Arid Tag, Brindonius, Nightbot. Yeah, we need to get Nightbot out of there. Okay, so we want to be able to edit the schedule. So um, let's add a folder for the schedule. Uh, Zapdos Man, welcome. Thanks for following. Uh, I guess that's why you didn't have coins. You hadn't followed yet. But either way, now it should actually give you some coins. Um... So there you go, rock, paper, scissors, paper. And we're all doing RPS, but uh, you can technically type out exclamation point rock, paper, scissors. That's actually an alias for that. Um, and same thing on our hangman game that we have. Uh, there's an HM uh, for that, because you could also type out the word hangman. Okay. So we want to be able to edit the schedule. Uh, let me make sure I don't have anything that I absolutely need to commit. Nope. Okay. So let's add in a razor page. So for anyone who hasn't seen the scaffolding, now is the time to pay attention. Um, because this is one of the cool things that's in razor pages. So we want to say that we want razor pages using Entity Framework CRUD. And it is going to do basically all this work for us. Uh, so we're going to say... Uh, we're gonna pick it out of here, which I thought that was gonna auto-complete it for me. So we're gonna say schedule entity. That's our data context. And then when we just let this go, uh, wait, uh, how did it win? Oh, yes, they all win. Rock wins again. Um, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissor. Oh, hey, Janiscu, you missed the S on the end. That was the problem. Yeah, so you can type out rock, paper, scissors the whole way if you like. Um, but that is a terrible command. Okay, so now everyone should probably notice that um, this is... So this created all of these files for me. So you'll notice that each one of these is already created, and I can just sort of go through each one. And I am going through them right now to get rid of the excess stuff that I don't need. So what's neat about this is that I can now refresh this page, and we should see our link on the... Oh, hang on. I actually need to run it. So let's do this. Every once in a while, you do need to give it a restart if you make significant enough changes. 
<laughs> JSQ. I swear it's not rigged. Hey, there we go. I win again. Uh, so there we go. Totally not rigged. Okay, so if I click on edit schedule, this is the link we just added here. So this links to the schedule index page. So notice in my link that I linked to, so I said ASP page schedule index, and that means that it references the URL uh, that would be for the schedule index page. Since it's the default page, it didn't actually have to put it in here. I can put it in there though, and you'll see that it doesn't actually make a difference. Either way, it loads the same thing and gets me this. So this will show you the schedule. Now it's not displaying quite right, um, but this is what we've got. And then when I do the edit, you'll see that I can edit each one of these, and in theory this works. Um, so if you type schedule, uh, I'm currently at UTC minus four, so I type that in. You'll notice that it printed the schedule over there for when dev chatter is live. So this is essentially what lets you edit that. So um, that is basically how this works. Um, so yes, if you're at UTC plus one, then I would have started at 7 p.m. your time today. And uh, we need to, so for this one, we need to change how these values get set so that you can take a look at this. Uh, show it to the stream also. Um, I can. Uh, update bot main. Nice. Very, very nice. And I don't think we're going to merge that one though. Uh, cause we don't need that commit in bot in, in the master. Hey, cute cat, if you want to make a contribution to the project, you can just make a contribution to the project. It's pretty easy to do. A lot of people have done it. Okay, so that gets us edit schedule. <laughs> Alright, and uh... I think that will work pretty well. Now the thing that gets me on these pages that we set up um, is that we can... Uh, oh yeah, so cute cat, even if you don't use GitHub that often, that's part of the reason to contribute on this project. Is it's a little easier to contribute. So if you haven't, if, if anyone here actually hasn't contributed to an open source project before and is interested in doing that, um, we can help you. Uh, so if you do one of these and you fork the repository, you should be able to send us a pull request that way. Um, so, yeah, if you go to GitHub, um, fork the repository, and you can actually clone your own down. It's hard for me to show that because I, uh, you know, I'm obviously on this account. So, um, I technically can, but that's a tough one to, to do on, on the spot here. Um, uh, Cute Kent, do you have a Pluralsight account? 178 would be a good start. What's 178? Oh, fi yeah, fix naming of ID to be ID. Yes. Um, uh, I was talking about Pluralsight, which is this. Uh, so, if you went here and you took a look at the github account um, you might you might find that there is a course that explains how to use uh, github um, I, I don't know I don't know who this guy might be um, he doesn't look very familiar oh well yeah it's actually, so 178 that Sven was talking about is a pretty easy thing. It's just doing a rename, essentially. So the trick would be uh, you'd want to fork the repository, make the change, and then you commit that back to your repository, and then 
you can send us a pull request. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, okay, so we got our schedule sort of in there. It needs to be a little bit better than that. We want to nice it up a bit. So I am going to do a couple of things with that. Um, adding in schedule changes. So right now it's not ideal for the display, it's not ideal for the editing, none of that's nice. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, cute cat, I, I will tell you there are a lot of good resources out on the internet that can absolutely help with that. Um, in fact, I would recommend to anybody that is interested in learning things, you can pretty much find whatever you want on, on the internet somewhere. Uh, and, and Nightbot killed you for posting a link. <laughs> Thanks, Nightbot. Nightbot does that kind of stuff. He's a little, little overzealous. It's a little overzealous. Is Nightbot male or female? I don't know. Maybe neutral? Uh, I don't know. Nightbot, don't make me break your servers again. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Let's see, we need to get the schedule stuff, so we got that one on there. Let's go to the schedule. On the index page for the schedule, um, we display, uh, HTML display for a model item, example date time. So let's go to example date time. So we put literally the model on here. System component model. Uh, the display name for this is, uh, remember when your creators had to redo you from scratch because they got mad at it muting me. Hey, I managed to get the mic muted before I sneezed. Go me. Hang on one sec. Okay, I'm back. Uh, and before Streamlabs chimes in with the, uh, oh, what a day, what a lovely day, uh, welcome, Slepix. Thanks for following. Hopefully you're enjoying Dev Chatter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go ahead and give this a better display name than example date time. Uh, let's see, example date time. There you go. Even the wow was muted. What, what wow? Wow. I, I'm, I'm not muted right now, am I? I'm not muted. Uh, example date. Uh, example. Um, Stream example date time. I don't know. That's that's tough. Uh, you aren't muted. Um, you whispered a link to me. You did? I don't have a whisper. Or at least Twitch isn't telling me about a whisper. Doesn't, I guess that doesn't mean I don't have one. So... Don't know. Oh no, I do have I do have whispers. Yes. Uh, MTC sent me a link. Also, I forgot about that one. And who else sent me links? Ah, okay. Uh, cute kit. I may check it out later. Um, okay. Uh, so let's take a look. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so here is the weird part that I want to point out. When you store a date time, you really want to do it based on a location, not based on a time zone. So, um, when, when you're talking about a repeating thing. So here's the complexity with date times, scheduled events, and things like that when programming that you probably haven't thought about. You might have the idea that you want to store the scheduled item as UTC, because UTC doesn't change, which is true. So that means that I could store it as UTC and, it, uh, and, and nothing else matters when... So, so Sven, you're sort of right. Always save it in UTC. However, there's some weirdness with that. Let's say that I always want my stream to start at 2 p.m. my time. So if I store it as UTC, well, what is 2 p.m. my time changes. So if it's stored as UTC, and I then convert into my time, let's say uh, in the winter I was storing it as UTC. So uh, I set it as 2 p.m. So that would have been 17... Uh, wait, 2 p.m. No, 19. 19. 19 o'clock UTC, right? And so the challenge is, so if I, if, uh, let me, let me type this so you guys can see it. Uh, where is one of these? So if I want it to be, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I schedule it for. Uh, at the time that I schedule that, it assigns that to UC, UTC. So actually, let me write that as 14. It's 14 UTC, uh, e, 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 EST, which means that that would go in as 19 UTC. Then, uh, daylight savings times hits. And so now in EDT, that is going to be 15. So all of a sudden, my time is wrong. Exactly, Janescu, and that's the point, is that I really want to save this, because I could convert, like, so, if I want, if, if I want it for my time, and I know that it was put in at this, I could then, you know, potentially convert as needed, because this is really what I want. So, I want it with a time zone. So, that I can, so that I can get it to the right one. Um, so that's a bit of complexity. I don't think we handle that just yet. Um, but that is that is a consideration that you that we need to make sure that we have because that is actually um, that is actually something that that will come up in more people's code than than you'd realize because uh, it's really nice if you can have things automatically work as someone changes things because uh, the weirdness that that we all run into is that week when we when uh, when the US and Europe don't line up because one or the other has already switched or, or hasn't switched into um, daylight savings time and hasn't switched their time zone, uh, I stream at a different time for you guys, so it's kind of weird, but I need it to match my schedule, so it's like, it's like, oh, okay. Um, okay, so we have that. Um, Um, how do I, uh, I forget, system, nope, system, dot, component model, dot, um, how do I do that? I don't remember how to do that. Uh, I don't remember the attribute for it. Anybody remember the attribute for that one? UTC times and add Z at the end of time. Uh, Janisku, yeah, you can add Z at the end of the time to make it UTC. Uh, which I believe that's uh, Z for Zulu. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be able to speak it, because I'm not typing to you guys through here. So if you've ever heard that, that's why they're saying that. Um... Edit quotes. Uh, which one is this one? Is this the quotes one? 
Pages index. Pages commands. Pages schedule. Here we go. Uh, display example data. Display for these. Well, let's take a look at what it created first. So we're going to go ahead and uh, build and run this project again. All right, finish running. Come on. We don't have all day. Yeah, it's just going to take forever there, I think. There we go. Of course it couldn't. So we are going to do this. We're going to restart the project. So there's the bot. And then I did not mean to do that, but that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and run that again. things off screen and then let me go ahead and uh, hello world the bot has arrived okay good um, I need to reload the page over here stream example date time there we go uh, over the summer a music studio team here in town are setting up a summer camp for 14 plus people who want to learn music production that's actually pretty cool cute cat um, I think that would actually be a really neat thing to learn. Um, do, 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 do. Something I need to do. Um, Okay, sorry, I had to do one thing there. Hopefully no one uh, left. Uh, let's see, since I'm not going to go appointment now, see you later. Have fun. Hopefully the doctor's appointment goes well. Uh, I was like, what is happening? But it was SpaceX start the webcast. <laughs> Jadisku. Uh, SpaceX webcast. I always do enjoy a good SpaceX webcast. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, so I don't want to change the way. So here's what changed when we did that. So it, it updated this value. I don't want to change the way that Uh, I forget how to change how this displays everywhere. Does anybody remember how to do that? I don't remember how to get the format string on this. Oh, Janiscu, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I do wonder if I freak anybody out when uh, when they're lurking the channel or they're lurking C Sharp Fritz's channel. And uh, really, in either case, when either of us goes live, uh, everybody that's lurking either one of the channels suddenly gets, uh, you know, a developer speaking to them through their speakers on their computer. Um, so, system component model display format string. Display format attribute, but, but, but I was looking for that and I didn't see that one.
Oh, do I need the full data annotations? That's why it wasn't there. Can I even get to that? I can't get to that, because I don't have it here. Okay, well, I can solve that. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, inside of this, I am going to make a new folder. We're going to call this View Models. So I don't want to bring data annotations in because I don't want this to show up. I, I do not want data annotations getting into our core project. Um, and at the end of the day, we should probably be using view models anyway. So I'm going to put this over here and I'm going to make a class for the uh, schedule view model. Um, and yeah, I'm being kind of general with this because I think this is going to make it pretty much everywhere. Um, The schedule view model might be strangely stored, so I might adjust how this works so that it doesn't map up exactly with what that is, because um, I might not need to show this the same way. <clears throat> uh, because I could uh, do something as simple as um, uh, date time, so I could do a date time offset and say example date time and I can just do this and then on this one I can just add the display format and I can kind of get away with that uh, so C sharp Date time format string, which I'm going to pull up because I can never remember exactly what they are. There we go. That's perfect. Thank you, random person. Oh, uh, whoops. Uh... Data format string. There we go. Had to look up what that name parameter was there. Uh, date time. Uh, EST now, right? Uh, time zone Zenu? Um, should be uh, EDT. I, yeah, my time zone right now is EDT. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. So, very strange. Uh, so I don't actually want those. I want Day of Week. Uh, so actually I didn't get the right ones. Day of the Week. DDD. That's what I want. Okay, I think that is the format string that I actually want to use right there. Uh, so this is broken up as, this should be the abbreviation for the day of the week, and the hour and the minute. Uh, I could say schedule UTC plus two, uh, and it give the right time. Um, yeah, so if you do schedule plus two, that is actually going to do UTC plus two. So right now the way our schedule command is, it's all... It's all based on UTC when it does the conversion. So if you want to get the right time, Janiscu, that's the way you do it right now. Um, what I want to be able to do is say this. I want to be able to say schedule um, and say like New York, for example, and have it take whatever you passed in as the additional parameters and say something along the lines of like, um, you know, search for what location you had and get come back with a time zone. So, um, and uh, no, Janiska, you can't you can't put in a time zone like that right now. Um, yeah, 
And anyway, uh, you'd do this right now, and then that would get it reported in uh, UTC. So if you do this right now, that should get you my times in UTC. So I start at 6 p.m. UTC. Okay, so here's what we need to change in order to make this work. So index is using uh, schedule entities, which we don't want it to do. We want it to use these view models. And the way that we get this, so that's to list async and then schedule select uh, new one of these and then this is going to be Uh, I am going to make a static method on this, public static, uh, and then one of these, and we're going to say from schedule entity, and it's going to take in a schedule entity, entity. return new one of these. And we're going to say example offset time equals entity dot example offset time, which yes, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it is actually because I don't want this to be the end structure that we communicate with. I want the user to be picking day of week and uh, time, and that's it. I want them to choose those two things as a separate piece and not choose a date time. And the way I'm going to do that, even if we store it, no matter how we store it in the database, I want them picking that because that's the interface that they're going to understand because my schedule for example is not you know that I stream on you know May 22nd for example it's that I stream on Tuesdays and I want them to be able to choose that yeah exactly um, uh, Je yeah Janiscu I want some way of being able to uh, give it a location when we call the schedule and be able to report back with that I think that would be the ideal circumstance so uh, schedule view model uh, dot that there we go um, uh, wait uh, oh I, can I not do it that way will it not let me to list async the thing then Huh. Well, that's fine. Um, sorry, thing. Um, why? I'm not sure why it wouldn't let me get that. I wonder why. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Is there a select async? No, no select async. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't, why I wasn't able to still async that. So I will need to look that, uh, look that up, WTF blub. That's really confusing that I wasn't able to do that. But this works just the same. Um, so we'll go ahead and bring this page up, and it should still load. Uh, but now we should get the correct formatting. Oh, whoops! Hang on, I left something somewhere. Oh, uh, on this front end, that's not the. Uh, I need to have the ID on that object. That is my mistake. Um, ID equals entity dot ID. My bad. We definitely needed that. Create property ID. There we go. We're going to put that up on the top. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and build again, but I'm, you know what, I'm actually going to stop the bot just in case. Just to make sure that everything builds right. We're going to restart the bot, so he's going to say hello again. Say hello to the bot, everyone. 
Welcome, bot. And we're gonna go ahead and view this again. And all should be right in the world. So there we go. There's our awesome web page under construction page. For anybody that's got any uh, 90s website nostalgia right there. Um, now when we go to edit the schedule. Ah, oh, rip. Uh, what does it have to be? It has to be like zero that or something. Oops. Oh, right, this goes inside of there. Brendan, you dolt. Derp. 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 Uh, okay, let's go here. Derp. There we go. Monday at that. Uh, hour, hour, at... And then what is it? TT, I think, might be the other one we need. Let's find out. Is TT it that I remember? That I remember. Cross your fingers, everybody. Yes, PM! We got it! Uh, so, what is it? DDD? Is that the one that we want? Do, do we want four Ds on there to get the full word? There we go. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. That is our schedule, everyone. Nicely displayed. Uh, doing exactly what we want. Um, oh, uh, Adon FPS. Um, I didn't answer your question. Which question? The revenue one. Uh, can developers make money? Uh, so, short answer is yes, developers can make money. Without getting into specific salaries, uh, I have made very good salaries as a software developer. Um, the, I know quite a few developers that make six-figure salaries in the United States, so go ahead and, you know, convert that into whatever currency you want. You also have to understand that different countries have different salaries. They pay for different things. Different ones have different uh, taxes that they have to pay, uh, and a lot of that is also based on your economy. So, for example, if I were to move to, uh, you know, Austin, Texas, for example, within the United States, I could make a lot more money than I can where I am. Uh, I could also move to Seattle and make more money. I could move to a lot of different places. So it really depends on where you are because even within the United States, there's a lot of variance in salaries. Um, there are developers making fairly low salaries here too. So um, what, what I would say are relatively low salaries. It depends on the type of company and the type of work you do also because um, you could make a lot of money as the solo dev in a company where they really need you. Or you could make a lot of money as a consultant. Um, I would argue that money is not uh, as valuable as some people might think. Uh, because at the end of the day, you need to enjoy your job. And that is probably the most important recommendation that I could uh, give someone. Um, so I know some developers that make salaries in like, um, you know, 60 to 70k. Uh, so sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, something like that, in in the U.S., which um, is a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Really low is relative. So like, if you're making like fifty, sixty, somewhere in in those ranges. Um, uh, in uh, there you go. So y yearly salary in in converted to euros. If you're making like 50, 60, this is like, these are like lower paying uh, developer jobs. So, rough conversion there. So, for programmers. Yeah, so, um, the idea is, uh, I, I don't know what the wow uh, is, if that's really high or really low, but, um, Yeah, so the other question is after taxes, because those are before tax numbers, so you, you do lose a good chunk of that, and it depends on the country you live in. And uh, there's a lot, yeah, see, as Sven says, there's a lot of other stuff too. So, um, it varies. Uh, but if you check out 
Uh, whoops, I can't spell Glassdoor. Um, you could check out their salary stuff because you could just say um, for this stuff. Uh, I specifically talked about Austin. If we did senior software engineer, which is a fairly general term, and put this one in here. See, as I said, they, you know, like that's roughly what I was saying. Like if you if you're in there, your average is going to be like a six-figure salary. Uh, this is basically what they make, and if we convert that into uh, USD in euros, just to convert that. Uh, whoops, that didn't want to switch it. There you go. Uh, so, roughly speaking, in euros, that's what developers in Austin make. So. So yes, uh, programming jobs pay reasonably well, if people are wondering. Um, yeah, so Slepix, the other thing stands here too. Generally, developers make more than sysadmins, but that's not a that's not a rule. There are plenty of sysadmins that make more than developers. It just depends. Uh, yes, hey Don, it's it's a good amount of money. Uh, and Arid Tag is correct. There is no state income tax in Texas, so. Uh, Texas has to pay the federal government's income tax, but they don't pay an income tax in their state. Uh, they might pay a, they probably pay a payroll tax or an income tax to their city, though, uh, which is a complexity of how U.S. taxes work. Uh, if you know the difference, then you're also one of those people that has had to deal with that and are either also a small business owner or something, uh, along those lines. Yes, uh, sorry, I was pulling up that pull request. That's why I was over here. Uh, yes. What is in this one? Uh, give cute kex mod. Uh, unlikely. This one, this one also is going to get rejected. Sorry. Uh, I, I don't usually, uh, I also don't mod people that ask for mod usually, uh, which is kind of a thing. So I mentioned earlier in the stream that uh, I do a lot of Twitch stuff, and um, I can tell you that I do actually mod uh, a, a lot of, I, I do mod for a lot of gaming channels also. Um, not that I'm like super active in modding for them, but a lot of times they, they make me a mod because I am... You know, like, first off, fairly trustworthy person that they, you know, don't mind letting mod for their channel. Uh, so, there is that. Um, not to say that you're not trustworthy. Uh, it's just that that's usually the thing, is don't ask... You don't usually ask to be a mod, and you'll, you're will you more likely to get it that way. Um, uh, okay, so we set this up. That is showing there. So now we need to convert the other spots to have it as well. Um, we don't need those. I already stole the values I needed from there because I always look up what the format string things are because I can never remember. That is so perfect. I really like that. That is exactly what we want to display there. Uh, which actually reminds me, uh, we can show those values on our uh, index page as well pretty easily. Um, we just need to add that to our model. So what I am going to do is this. <coughs> I am going to make uh, and I, uh, I'm gonna make a, yeah, uh, a, uh, I list, list, I list of, uh, schedule view model, uh, schedule view models, there we go, on get, and I'm gonna just say this for now, schedule view models equals, Let's go over to this one. Where's the schedule? Right here. Index. Right there. Uh, welcome, whoever that was. I haven't looked yet, but thank you for following. Hopefully you're enjoying Dev Chatter. Uh, let's see. Um, N2Ition TV. Uh, welcome. Thank you for following. Uh, and yes, Slepix, um, if you saw how expensive it is to live in Austin, you would understand why that amount of money, uh, is less than you think it is. Uh, Corbold, welcome! Hello! Uh, first time here, and, uh, hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Uh, and freelancing can work as well. Yes, uh, freelance developers, uh, you can also do that. Um, you, you gotta... 
Uh, okay, so uh, on this, I need to set up a constructor. So I am actually just going to go steal this right here. Jump over here, bring this code in. What a lovely day. Corbold, thank you for following. Uh, I will take it to mean that you are enjoying the stream. Uh, so what's cool here is that this constructor is going to automatically get wired up because we are doing, uh, we are using the service layer to automatically wire up our uh, dependencies. So that app data context will get set automatically with this uh, context object, which we're going to use down here to get our data. And then that in turn will be displayed on the page. So for now we have this stubbed in piece, uh, which is right there. And I am going to go ahead and refresh this and go back to the home page. And you can see in the other the other stubbed in stuff that we've got that we will be depending on. It's right here. So we're going to replace this uh, with list items that are added from that instead. So if we take a look here, you will see that we have a nice for each that we're going to steal. Now, if anyone hasn't, if anyone here hasn't seen how um, Razor works, this is the neat thing. So, these are not schedule entities; these are schedule view models. Uh, you'll see that it 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 has these. So, this at symbol here is what indicates to the to the code here that this is going to be code and not HTML markup. So, uh, I'm suddenly able to use my for each here. The neat part is that it's able to figure out the curly braces on that. So that's the really cool thing. Uh, so I'm going to take one of these, bring it up here, and then I want to steal this. So I'm going to copy that right in there, uh, and I'm going to wrap this in an LI. So that is now a list item that is going to display that value. And this now should work correctly. We're going to find out because it's not going to say Mondays, it's going to say Monday. There we go. Monday, that time. So now it is using the actual value coming out of the database for that. Uh, web dev here. Uh, yeah, so that is a, that is a great point. Um, um, so, uh, the question of whether, so making a change to InfoSec, um, so I will say simply that we need both. Uh, so the breaking versus building debate, um, we need a lot of people that are breaking things. We need a lot of people that are building things and we have to work together. Uh, so, um, a good friend of mine who is a developer, um, he was always interested in that area of technology. And so what he did was he went and got, uh, he got a job working at a security company, uh, building the tools that their security team uses. So he is a developer working with a bunch of uh, security experts. And so I thought that was a very nice way of transitioning. So it's sort of like a small transition. So he might want to switch into that eventually. He's very interested in it. Uh, but that's sort of like a stepping stone. So I thought that was a very cool, uh, very cool thing to do. Um, not sure what kind of questions I answer, but your computer science is going into your final year and you've been trying to work on more personal projects to gain experience. You're currently working on a Twitter bot. What type of projects would you recommend to someone looking to build a collection of personal projects and gain experience? Um, that is a great question. Um, I guess it really comes down to what you're interested in, Corbold. Um, so... One of the things that I love is that um, when so when I was a, a student learning to program, I was always doing side projects. And one of the best things that you can do uh, as a developer, regardless of skill level, no matter where you are in your career, is to be working on fun side projects. And the reason I say fun side projects is you don't want to get caught in the trap that people talk about, where it's like you have to be doing you know hundreds of hours of practice. Uh, just to stay relevant, because that's a recipe for, um, well, not enjoying what you're doing. Uh, so that's partially why I recommend doing something fun. So if there's a type of programming you like, maybe that's gaming, um, you could work on something that is uh, some form of a game. It could be as simple or complicated as you like. 
Uh, maybe you're not interested in games. Maybe you are interested in uh, real-world stuff, like board gaming. So we have a project that uh, we're going to be coming back to on stream that's a game tracker. Uh, and our plan is to make it so you can record uh, board games that you've... You know, board games, card games, any any real-world game. I guess it doesn't... It could be, could be a video game, too. Uh, but essentially, keep track of games you played with friends. Uh, record who won and lost. And probably also then... Uh, include a rating for how much you enjoyed the game and essentially do a web project like that um, I know some people that are interested in IOT stuff Corbold so if you're interested in that you could do that um, I've seen some really interesting drone programming projects that people have done before um, I was at a conference and um, uh, it had a it had a large ballroom area where uh, people were programming drones to fly around the room and do certain things and uh, I worked for a company that uh, we all wore green shirts, and so one of so a, a group of our developers programmed their bot to look for that color of green around the room and fly at us. So like we had drones like dive bombing us, trying to like you know not ones that were going to harm us. They've got like safety stuff all around the the blades, so you don't actually get hurt by them. But it's kind of funny. It's like we come walking into rooms, and it's like oh, and you've got your drones attacking us. Thanks, guys. So it was our teammates that were doing it. was funny. Uh, let's see. Are you not doing a year in industry? Uh, yeah, so the other thing that, um, that he just mentioned there, uh, Exo just mentioned, um, is uh, a lot of people go and, and take some time in industry, whether that is uh, a, a co-op or an internship or something like that. Uh, in some way, go and do some programming. Uh, I highly recommend that. And if you're learning multiple languages, have a side project would recommend to introduce all the skills of the project and a suggestion of implementing a database using SQL to a project with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or Java application other than registration, login accounts, etc. Any suggestions on implementing a database using SQL into a project? Um, I actually don't have a good recommendation on that one. I have not um, worked with uh, Java in that way in in a while, so uh, my recommendations would be out of date. Um, so I would just be googling that. Um, thanks for showing general computer science. I've been doing biology and what computer science did a year in the industry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So Corbold, um, I I would also recommend. Uh, so biology is awesome. Uh, my wife uh, has a biology degree and does biology research, um, but uh, computer science is also a very good and rewarding career so if you do enjoy this stuff I, I would recommend uh, pursuing it. Okay so we have the schedule, schedule is working nicely and we can come in here to edit it and now when we go to the details page it's still showing us the wrong one which is fine. Uh, editing is still going to be wrong because we're not even doing a date picker yet, which uh, would be better than nothing. But I don't want a date picker either. I want like day of the week and time picker. So I want a time picker and I want a day of the week picker. So the time picker we should be able to get away with because that's a default piece. But the day of the week one is going to be weirder. And I'm thinking just a, I'm thinking we just want to have it be a uh, drop down list and you just pick the one that you want. So I think that's going to be the way it it should be. However, uh, I want to go ahead and do this. Um, adding display of schedule on the mockups. Okay, push that out. Send that up there. Uh, and you are asking if I am using a standing desk. And the short answer to that is yes. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, so I use a standing desk, have for many years, I, I love standing desks. Um, they, there's some good things and bad things about them. One of the problems with standing desks is, uh, that your feet get tired, things like that. So I have a pretty good mat that I stand on. Um, but, um, the, uh, the problem is if I spend a lot of time sitting, I get really, really, uh, I don't know, lethargic, probably a good good term for uh, how I end up. Uh, you recently did a project that interesting. Uh, was there predetermination selection? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That actually sounds like a pretty cool one. Corbold, glad to hear it. Yeah, actually, when I was in college, um, 
Mayhem Mike, thanks for following. When I was in college, I did a uh, I did a few interesting projects. One of them was a we did a uh, we did a an FPS game. So we did a first person shooter uh, where we were. Um, uh, we added a bunch of interesting and fun things to it, so it was quite enjoyable. Um, I did a lot of other projects too, but that was just one of them. Okay, uh, do you have a book recommendation for Python or C++ that are actually helpful, not just some basic coding on it? And that's... Um, in an FPS, I don't have... the. So the problem is... Um, I would have had great recommendations for you on both Python and C++. Well, how many years has it been now? So I haven't really used those professionally in over a decade at this point. Um, so that means that I haven't been reading the books recently. And so uh, because of that, I don't have a good recommendation on C++ or Python right now. Um, but you can ask the internet and you can probably get a good recommendation. Uh, Bell Squad, hello, welcome. Um, oh, XO, that's that's a bummer. Uh, Flow Motion, welcome. Thanks for following. Uh, what kind of chatbot are you writing? Bell Squad, it is a Twitch chatbot. Uh, it's actually the one that is in here, so um, you can go ahead and, for example, find it on uh, GitHub. Uh, if you go to github.com slash devchatter, which I linked in the chat, so the bot that we are creating is actually the one that is in here in chat. Uh, so if you do want to talk to it, that is a good way to do it. Um, and uh, as everybody knows, if you want to talk to us after the stream, Discord is the place to do that. Uh, so we have a Discord. Uh, and Discord, for those of you that don't know, is a chat application that's commonly used for gamers and used by a lot of Twitch channels. So we do use it here also. And um, the main people that talk in the Discord uh, are the ones that have contributed to the project and are the regulars here. So if you want to chat with any of us about uh, programming, anything like that, um, that is actually where you'll find that. Uh, XO, um, I am actually an independent consultant. Um, and uh, and uh, Bell Squad, thanks for following also. Uh, so I am an independent consultant. I do a lot of training and mentoring, uh, and I also do just general consulting work. So um, I work with various clients. Uh, some of them are individual developers that uh, want mentoring hours. So I will uh, pair program with them uh, and work with them on the actual code that they do for their projects. Uh, and then I will also do training, uh, workshops, exercises, and things like that with my clients. So I sometimes work with uh, full dev teams. So uh, I will actually, uh, you know, sit down and, and work with each member of a dev team for a small amount of time over the course of a week. Uh, and then I also line up clients where I'm actually just doing general development work for them. Uh, so I'll either join on as a member of their team for a while and I'll be there a few days a week. Uh, and then that leaves me the rest of my time to uh, stream and work on other side projects that I do. So in addition to being an independent consultant, um, I also uh, work on a, uh, an online training company called DevIQ. Um, and Bell Squad, <laughs> that is a great question. Um, how do I get my Visual Studio to look like this? Uh, there's a couple of things. First off, um, I have the dark theme turned on, so uh, that's why everything's mostly dark. The other interesting thing that you'll notice uh, is my tabs look a little bit different. And that is because I have the Productivity Power Tools extension installed. And as part of that, I have the custom document well in here. And that actually um, does some special color coding based on the projects. So it changes how my tabs work a little bit. Uh, so this is an extension. Uh, it's a free extension that anybody can add into Visual Studio. And it is called Productivity Power Tools. And the Power Tools are basically a set of other extensions. So you'll notice I have a bunch of extensions installed. When I install this one, the Power Tools, it gets me that custom document well. And that's basically the name for the colored tabs. So the interesting thing about the tabs is you'll notice this like brown color. That is my web project. Uh, anything that is open from the bot project has that light blue color. Anything that's open from the core project has that yellow color. And then on down the line, you'll see there's a different color for each one of these. And so that's how you can tell 
each one apart and then they alphabetize the tabs inside of that. So that's uh, why my Visual Studio looks the way that it does. Um, someone else had commented, uh, so you had also asked where I work, so the other thing I want to tell you about that one is I mentioned to you all that I work, uh, I have a company that I started called DevIQ, uh, which I am going to toss on screen. Um, so this is DevIQ. The reason I bring this up is um, that uh, I got the go-ahead today to tell all the dev chatter people that I can actually get you guys a discount on any uh, DevIQ courses. So if anybody is interested in taking a DevIQ course, I can actually get you a code that will make it cheaper. Uh, and I am actually just going to post that in chat. Um, so that there. And I will actually be putting that down below uh, so that that's actually on a permanent panel on uh, Dev Chatter uh, down below the stream. So if anybody is interested in taking this, um, you can take a look at that. And actually the course I would actually recommend that everyone take is one called uh, the, Sci Oops. the Science of Great UI. So don't let the price tag scare you. This course is actually really, really amazing. Um, so uh, the science of great UI, like holy cow, your mind will be blown when you watch this. It is actually really good. Mark Miller is kind of brilliant. So uh, I'm thinking about expanding into the website of C-sharp. Awesome, good. Uh, what would you re recommend? Learning MVC5 or Core? MVC seems to be widespread, but lots of people say Core is the future. Uh, Mayhem Mike, that is an easy, easy, easy answer. Um, you want to use .NET Core, and I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, if you use .NET Core, uh, you can use Razor Pages, uh, and it's lighter weight, it's faster, and on top of that, you can still use MVC. So when you use .NET Core, MVC is still there. So you don't actually lose anything by not taking it. The question is whether you're depending on the .NET full framework or just .NET Core. And if you want to understand the difference between .NET framework and .NET Core, uh, you can actually go watch the beginning of this video. So go to the videos section on Twitch, take a look at the video, uh, the video there. Uh, so essentially starting this one over, it'll be today's stream. And you can uh, see I started off with a discussion of what .NET Standard, .NET Core, and .NET Framework are. So I talked about that at the beginning of this. Uh, and yes, uh, Flowmotion, um, .NET Core is uh, cross-platform. You can use it on Windows, you can use it on Linux, you can use it on Mac, you can put it on Docker Container. Uh, so it is, uh, it really is the future of C-sharp coding. Um, and I, I will give you the warning, as Microsoft will tell you, dot, full .NET Framework is not going away, but .NET Core is clearly the future. So there's no question there. Uh, thanks, we will do. Uh, it's confusing to find the right path for a newcomer to .NET. Yes, yes, Mayhem Mike, uh, take a look at the beginning of this video. That is actually the, the exact thing that we were covering is why that is confusing and, and what we were going over. Uh, so if anybody is wondering, all of our code is out on GitHub. Uh, I want to mention that again, uh, so I'm going to toss the link in chat there. Why did, is the bot not running? The bot crashed. So we have a couple of bugs in our bot that we're, we're going to get to eventually. It's just the bugs aren't fun, so hence we haven't been tracking those down. Let me bring the bot back up. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I could have actually looked at it. So, Sven, uh, there is logging in there, and uh, that was logged, but uh, I'm not going to bother looking at it because uh, I'm talking to you guys. Uh, one sec, I need to take a Pepsi break. Pepsi not sponsored. Anyway. Uh, yet. Not sponsored yet. Um, Got to gotta put in the yet, because we're still hoping. Um, anyway, uh, so I wanted to link to GitHub, which is there. And then uh, in, um, in the GitHub, you'll notice a couple of projects. One of them is our stream info one. And this is actually where people can make suggestions for things that they want to see us do on the stream. So um, things... Uh, so if you go to the issues here, 
you'll notice that there is a closed issue for do a stream explaining the various .NET Framework versions. Uh, so we actually did that today. Uh, OMG Games, when you are a new follower, could earn some tokens, not just a hundred tokens. So, uh, since I did it at the beginning of the stream, I'm not going to do it again, but basically I talked about this and uh, how that works. So you can check the beginning of the video if you want to see uh, what that is. Um, so, uh, I went over all the different versions. It's right at the beginning, so you don't even need to... Uh, you don't even need to look at that. Uh, and and Slepix, uh Janiscu is not a native English speaker. In fact, uh, very good English, um, but no, not a native English speaker. Uh, the three in a row fruit game, the arcade game. Oh, um, yeah. So there are a lot of um, there are a lot of arcade games that we need to add in Janiscu for ways of uh, people to ways for people to earn coins. Uh, we just also need to come up with ways for them to redeem coins, so things for people to do with them. Um, oh no no no, Slipix, Yeah, I, I know it wasn't a, a mean comment. It was it was a joke comment. I know I know exactly what you're quoting too. Um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of non-native English speakers. The thing that I've tried to explain to to people before, because uh, someone said to me, it's like, oh, English isn't as widespread as you think it is, and I was like, oh no, no no, it is. It might not be like the most common, you know, first language, but it probably is the most common second language on the planet. So you can buy a Pepsi. Why? Why can I? I I've got a I've got a Pepsi right here. Um. Oh, so uh, lucky number sevens. Uh, gives followers their hundred coins, their hundred tokens, even if they are, even if he's not online. Uh, that's actually a really nice thing. We probably should build that into our bot at some point. Definitely something to look at. Uh, but either way, um, I did want to mention to everybody the stuff that I was saying a little bit ago. Um, uh, Coke. So I, I finished this at the beginning of the stream, so this is a Coke, um, and I, I'm drinking Pepsi now. Um, neither one is like a sugared beverage, these are both the ones that use like aspartame or something. Um, I, I prefer Pepsi, and I, I understand that that might lose me a follower or two, uh, but that is my preference. Um, I also use spaces, and I am brave enough to admit that to you all. Like, I show it on screen. You can see my space dots here. Oh, someone asked why my visual, how I got my Visual Studio to look this way. If you meant how did I get that white space there, uh, and it's gone. And it's back! There are keyboard shortcuts to make those uh, show up. And um, I use uh, Control rw is the keyboard shortcut that I use to show those. Yeah, people use spaces, tabs. I, I don't care which one you use as long as you use one throughout your project. If you want to use spaces, cool. If you want to use tabs, cool. Uh, if you want to use spaces and tabs in the same line, um, well, that's fine. Never work on my projects, ever. Please. Please don't. Uh, is it hard to incorporate slash embed a Java application you've created into a website so it can be used in a browser? XO, um, 